being brave enough quite mm. simply and having the support around you to be able to go against the norm Normally in YouTube videos, I try to say what you're going to get out of this video in the first few seconds to you know, hopefully inspire you to stay with us. I'm honestly not sure what this video is going to bring. We just had, at least speaking from my perspective and then Nisha can share hers, quite a traumatic experience. Um, you know, we're on a fun trip. It's a fun trip and we're just, you know, driving through the middle of Florida and every time we have these road trips, I kind of dread them because you see something you see quote farms or you know what i think of as death camps and you see all the individuals there and you, you know their fates as a vegan um and and today we saw a truck and initially we we're like is there anyone on it is there not and as a vegan you, you know the trucks i'm talking about you kind of you can almost feel them coming before you see them and i don't know what's better an empty truck or a full one but this one was full of individuals and i <sighs> I personally have been to a vigil or quote save. I know there's a distinction between the two we won't get into. But this was very full on because of traffic. We were basically sitting next to the individuals for a good five, 10 minutes. I've experienced similar things, um, but that was every, every, every time you're face to face with a moral atrocity or more moral atrocity that's about to happen. I, I think it's, 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 it's got its own unique, <laughs> secondary trauma associated with that. Um, I just, so I was trying to drive, trying to film, and, and honestly, my body is just overwhelmed with emotion, and I'm, I've done so much street outreach, and I'm, I'm, I keep myself together for the street outreach because I know it's more effective, but man, this instant, I was just hanging out there, and just, I, I just wanted to help myself, powerless. And, and that's, that's the challenge of animal advocates, I think, we just, we see this massive, effing injustice and just want to do something and it's just you know I feel like sometimes stopping the animal holocaust it feels like like I have about as good a chance as stopping that truck from rolling down the road it just se seems like such an unstoppable force this human supremacy this violence this pervasive injustice and uh, <laughs> good setup for you there huh yeah. well, it's just so hard to, to comprehend, to understand that people people are aware that this is going on and for some reason are unable to 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 stop. Um, they don't care. They're not able. I don't. I just don't understand. I think I'd be curious as to what what other people think as they see that truck driving down the highway just as we did I mean there were other vehicles that were stopped right next to to these mm. individuals they must have looked to their left and and seen seen them seen their eyes seen their ears seen the expressions on their faces and what were they thinking did they did they look away did they process did they consider what what the fate of these individuals were and I just want them, just want them to care or to stop. I just don't, I, I struggle to understand. Yeah. Yeah. And then we've got these two that are sitting here and they're no different. They're, they're lucky, they're, they're living they're living a life, quite simply, and these other cows and other individuals don't have that same choice. I know. I know. Yeah, they're bred into this forced existence, manipulated and having children. I mean, the, I'm, I'm guessing there are maybe 50 cow children on this truck, you know, very young, very young. Um, I mean, there's a quote, beef bumper sticker on the front of the truck just to, to kind of slap it in our face a little bit more, which I'd love to put quote marks around beef because we all know that's a euphemism, but it's just, uh, just want people to care, I think is a, is a brilliant thing to do. And, and that's the thing, we can't force people to care. And it's almost like, I don't know if it's lack of caring or like a, 
willful, willful ignorance. Like they, they, they know that if they look deeper, those, at least some people, there's what 98% of the population who is not vegan. Some of them, some of you watching the video maybe, will, will think like, you know, if, if you look, for, look closer to these individuals, look at the faces, I'll share some of the, the, the footage here. What is the moral difference between the, the cow individuals who we just saw in this truck and a dog? If one of you, please, and, and I welcome open conversation, please could somebody tell me what the moral difference is between a cow on the truck and, and Dexter sitting here, you know, rescue dog, obviously. Uh, we're, we're not, you know, supporting breeding through him just for what it's what it's worth. I mean, I, you, I you'd like to think people saw their faces, they would change, and, and, and I don't know, maybe some do. But I think people do care. I genuinely think in yeah. their hearts they care. They care. They started to care from the moment they were, they were born. I think that we're a product of our society, the society that we live in. And when others uh, are doing a, a certain action or behavior, it becomes normal and it stops people from thinking. It stops people from really standing there and listening, listening to their hearts and, and taking the actions that are needed to to oppose um, what's happening. Um, that's that's my belief anyway. But maybe I, I just I, want people, I want, I need to believe that people care. <laughs> well, and I think as animal advocates, I know a lot of you who, who watch these videos are animal advocates. I, I think you kind of have to look for that hope and that good in people. And for ourselves, I mean, I, I was 32 years supporting the animal use before, you know, I started living vegan and, um, you know, I didn't change the first time I saw something, I don't think. It took it took years of just, like you say, just listening to the heart. And, um, and, just... and, and being, being brave enough, quite mm. simply, and having the support around you to be able to go against the norm. Because it, it's not easy to oppose things that um, everybody else is doing. Yeah, and, and I think, for, you know, it's a... a lesson I, I took from Claire Mann that I really respect um, is, 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 is taking these uncomfortable feelings as animal advocates, it's inevitable we're going to have them. Um, but taking them and converting that into some type of, of, of change or action, I, I think obviously the action's meant to help others who are the primary victims, but I think as, as animal advocates, we, we have the secondary trauma and we've got to find some way to cope with it. I mean, this video, the reason I'm recording this video isn't... <laughs> for any other reason to, to try to give these individuals a, a, a bit of just just coverage before the end of their lives before they're murdered before they're first forced on that killing floor I mean we we're just listening to a podcast um, Wendy does um, Thrive Vegan World and there's the, the podcast was talking about someone who actually used to t literally quote raise these individuals of various every species you can think of and, and because it was a quote small slaughterhouse would, would go on to the kill floor with them and use his own voice because they knew his voice to lead them on to the kill floor. I mean, this, this, this trust, stuff is so twisted. Abusive, it's abuse of trust. And, and individuals, you know, animals are, are exceptionally caring and they trust us and, and we absolutely violate that trust. Yeah. So. Oh, and you just, it just, it's honestly like sensory overload. For any of you who have, have, have been up and close with these trucks, um, I think this is probably the, while I've had other experiences, the first, quote, truck experience I've had um, up close like that. Um, it's usually either too fast of an encounter or empty whatever. But to see those individuals' faces, I mean, they're, they're just sticking their little noses out the windows, feeling that you feeling the wind on their nose. You know, they don't know what's going on. And it's just knowing where they're going is so heartbreaking. It's... Uh, we assume they don't. They may not know. They they True. may understand. Depending on the individual, the, they the smells. Yeah. Their their yeah. friends and family members left and never came back. I think that there's a yeah there's a significant it's amount of knowing and, and and fear and you know that's devastating. So I I don't know <sighs> if there's any any other words of wisdom. I I, I know that uh, I think it helps to have little tricks to, for situations like this. I know as I was sitting there. You know, I, I wanted to document their experience, um, which is why I did a little bit of video. Um, but 
the main thing I try to say, and I actually said it out loud, I think, probably a couple times, like, we see you and we're trying. And just having some type of mantra like that, and, and just use this, because there's so many, I, I, I don't know how many people watch this, you know, I, I've, I'm trying to get back into YouTube, hopefully we can build more of the community there, but, I, you've all got such unique skills like maybe let's get a brainstorm in the comments of how we can start you know supporting each other to, to um, build awareness and, and, and get out there and, and just so that there aren't these trucks going by um, these death trucks and nothing's happening let's let's make something happen to, to counterbalance all the violence in the world yeah I think with that Dexter is very restless to have his breakfast <laughs> so um, he, he probably noticed him kind of tapping us like come on come on what are you doing talking he also likes his I head scratches breakfast. too <laughs> well and that's just like we were saying every single one of the cows on that truck they have their own personal interests I mean Dexter's up in the front seat he wants his head scratched and Chewie in the back here she's she's been asleep most of the trip so they're they're both yeah there's also unique and and, and and life is such a precious thing we shouldn't be breeding him in into existence in the first place but if they're already here let's do what we can to to honor those lives um, and that does not mean sending them to the kill floor that does not mean yes. so thank thank you all um, for all you're doing um, love to hear what you have to say in the comments and and remember to support um you know whether it's your local sanctuary or or another sanctuary that you're connected to they um absolutely deserve and need need your support and help whether that's volunteering or donating yeah we're going to uh um, kindred spirits in the north of florida um tomorrow actually what near jacksonville yeah, so a big cathartic um, i think i think it's obviously the primary thing is to help the individuals there but then also i think for ourselves to charge ourselves up and get the stories to tell and and don't let these individuals like stories be lost keep these stories within you i mean we can tell this story now you know we saw their faces on the truck and da da da, -da and, and and use it for advocacy because i mean that's one of that's one of the few things we can do so. yeah if you haven't already subscribed um, and, and you want to talk more about these subjects, please um, do consider subscribing. If you've watched this long, chances are you're interested in the content. I've got a lot of content um, planned um, to get up there, so I'm excited to share that with you. So keep up the good fight, uh, ad advocating for our fellow animals, especially when it comes to our language, and we'll see you in the next video. Sorry that I couldn't get to you.